Hey guys, Len here. I just pulled up to one of my favorite coin shops and about a year and a half, well, about two and a half years ago now, actually, um, I traded 70 ounces of silver for one ounce of gold. Today, the silver gold ratio is 85 to one. So I have gold in my pocket. I'm gonna go in there and see how much silver I can trade it for. And I'm gonna see what else I can find. I'm not gonna film in there. They're not really a fan of that and I respect it, but I will show you what I come out with. Is that good? Is that good, Sasha? Should we trade more coins? Yeah, I think we should trade more coins. All right, guys, we're back. We are back home. And as you can see, what is not in front of me is a whole bunch of silver, although there is some silver in front of me. Um, really quick wrist check here. Today I've got the Seiko 5 on that uh, my daughter got me for Christmas. So, um, but why didn't I trade that Krugerrand for silver? Well, I kind of did, but the so the GSR as of today was like 85 to 1. Okay, but dealers take their premiums into account, and I think what most people don't understand about playing the GSR is that you have to look at them buying your gold for whatever they would normally buy gold for. It's really two transactions. They're purchasing, and you are purchasing, so it's not a trade. Right? It's not like, hey, go tr tr you can't go to a dealer and just say, trade me this for 85 ounces of generic silver. You know, uh, that would be awesome. I was hoping I could get close. I was hoping if I could get 79 or 80, I would be happy. I couldn't get that close. So I was like, well, what should I walk away with today? <laughs> and um, so I'm going to show you what I came away from uh, with from the coin shop today. First of all. I will show you this March of Dimes set. This March of Dimes set is pretty sweet. Um, this came out in 2015, and... <laughs> it is very, uh, very cool. This is, I guess, um, to commemorate the March of Dimes, of course. It comes in this beautiful velvet clam shell case. But guess what's in here that I love? It's got a W Dime, a 2015 W, let me just see if I can pop that bad boy out of there. Here it comes. There we go. So look at that. Guess where that's going? That's going to my W book. So you got this really nice 2015 W dime. And that's for the book. That's silver, by the way, that W. Unlike the 2016, which or the 1996, which is clad. What's really cool is that you have this reverse proof Philadelphia minted silver Roosevelt dime. Gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And then you got the commemorative dollar in there. Beautiful proof. March of Dimes, of course, is money to help with the health of women, infants, and children. So, very cool. Happy to have that. In fact, as long as I've got this out, let's just get that. Let's just get that out of the way, shall we? I'm gonna leave it in the flip. I'm hoping that putting it in like a half dollar flip, I can still effectively fit it in the book. So, let's see how this is gonna work. That's a little, that's a little sus, I can say. But we're gonna give it a whirl. We're gonna give it the old college try. Let's see what happens here. So this is a W, it belongs in the W book. There's my little players. Here we go. One of these days I'll purchase the correct kind of stapler for stapling coin flips. Until that day, we'll just mush staple. Alright, so we got that. And let's see here. I'm sure there was a pen here somewhere. If you could look to my left, you'd see the disaster of things that I moved to make room for making this video. Alright, here's my pen. So let's see. 2015 W. And you know I like to put the mintage on my flips. If I'm not mistaken, this dime has less than 200,000 minted. Let's look that up here real quick. Nope, not barbers. Here we go. 2015 
W Silver, $74,430. This is a $30 dime, according to the Red Book. I paid $50 for this set. And let's see, the 2015S is... Or I'm sorry, the 20. 15p reverse proof is also $30. <laughs> so you get $60 worth of dimes in a uh, $50 set. I added this today from the laundromat, uh, Marsh Billings Rockefeller 2020, and it's filthy. I sent a picture of it to Fish and I said, I think I'm going to start a lowball W set. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it was really filthy. Shame on me, I cleaned it, but it's because it was grime. Like, serious grime. So that fits. That works. All right, let's set that aside for the moment. And we will put this away right quick show you what else I came away with. You probably see it already. That's why the W book is not going too far away. Because I got another W half dollar. And he was nice enough to pull this from the set for me. So that is mm, fantastic. Such a fan of that. If you're wondering how many of these W half dollars were minted in 2014, that would be 219,173. So very low mintage, guys. That's why I'm saying these Ws, don't sleep on them, y'all. Do not be sleeping on the Ws. This one is probably a Proof 69 because if you look just above, there's just a little bit of a flaw see if I can zoom in on that right above the uh, ivy there I guess so I don't know if you can discern that or not but it's not a PF 70 a PF 70 this would be a hundred and twenty dollar coin but it's not it's not a it's not so but I can live with that I can live with that all right we are gonna put this one in the W book also. So we have three editions as of today. We are we're one we are one away from being half full on this W album. So that's pretty exciting. Alright, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's see what else I picked up today. I also picked up this really nice looking um, Long Island commemorative half dollar from 1936. You know I am a sucker for a ship on a coin. And this is a good one. This is a really good one. My lighting should be better here, but I apologize. I think this is better than an MS-60. The reason it's an MS-60, it doesn't have contact marks all over it. This is an extremely clean coin. It's just lackluster. It's a little flat. There's no wear. There's really not even any chatter to speak of. There's a little bit up here on the on the front on the sail on the bottom. But otherwise, this is a very, very clean coin. And I'm going to leave it in here. I was going to tear it out, put it in my own uh, flip but I'm not going to do that. All right. So, so far, you've seen the Kennedy half dollar. You've seen the March of Dimes. I'm going to show you what I traded for that I have been wanting for a very, very, very long time. And that is the $10 Eagle Indian Head. 1914 Philadelphia Minted. This one is an AU for sure. Um, but this, I, I wouldn't say this is a key date, but it's, it's, it's better than common, but it's not key. All right. In 1914, there was 151,000 total minted. 
The question is how many were melted? How many survived? That's the real question. So this is a really beautiful, lustrous coin. I'm going to try to hold it still here so I can zoom in on editing and show you that the issues are with the hairline below the headband shows some signs of wear. So if you can focus in on that area there, and then on the eagle, this front part of the wing right here also shows some evidence of wear as well. Um, also, um, so I mean, it's definitely circulated, very lightly circulated. This is what you call a slider, right? Um, this was actually cracked out of an MS-62 case, the dealer told me. He's, um, and the dealer that I bought this from used to work for Heritage Auctions. The guy knows coins. And um, he bought it as an as a AU-58, and he sold it as an AU-58. Actually, he sold it much better. Uh, he sold it to me... I basically paid the price if the red book is to be believed I bought it at a VF20 pricing so for my 1978 gold Krugerrand I received these I received the commemorative set here and I received the Kennedy half dollar and I put about 500 bucks back in my pocket so um, that's gonna be important because well, there's one or two things I have to do. I either have to pay my taxes <laughs> or um, uh, I have a coin show coming up in April locally here. So one of the two. It's probably going to taxes, let's face it. So anyhow, um, when you're playing the GSR, just be aware that spot price doesn't matter. It's your sell price and your purchase pricing. Um, if you think that because of GSR, is 85 to 1 that you're that that's what your trade is going to be um you best guess again so anyhow that is all i got for today if you hung around this long and you haven't hit the like button i hope you will do so and if you're not subscribed i hope that today is the day i earn your subscription so see you in the next one